Hello, hello, hello. Where's there? That pop. Good thing. Okay. Oh, hello, 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 and welcome to Dolphin's Dive, the weekly strategically minded Handelabra stream hosted by yours truly, Lou Dolphin. Handelabra believes in civil rights for everyone and in being as inclusive as possible, so any comments or activity actively working against that goal are not welcome and will not be tolerated. You can follow us at Handelabra Games on Twitch and Handelabra on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. You can follow me personally at LouDolphin21 on Twitter, and on Twitch and YouTube it's just LouDolphin, no digits. Sentinels the Multiverse and One Deck Dungeon are available on Steam, iOS, and Android devices, as well as Analog, Cardboard, Ink, and Dice. And you can get the games and more info through Handelabra.com. Hello, hello, hello. So you're going to notice that the webcam is angled a little weirdly. Uh, normally, the webcam is over here. Well, way over here, in fact. But I've moved it over here because of my two-monitor setup that I have. The monitor that I'm playing the game on is still this one, so I'm now looking to the side. This is the better monitor, to be sure. This is my older monitor that's uh, 1080p. This is 1440p. And it also goes up. It's a 144 hertz monitor. This is a 60 hertz monitor. Uh, but it doesn't really have as good of a slot for the webcam. Because wherever I put the webcam, it covers the screen a little bit. Whereas over here, there's a little window. I got Not window, but space above for the webcam so i moved the webcam over here but that means that now i'm angled this way so if it looks like i'm off to the side and the chat's over here so when i respond to people in the chat it might look like i'm not really looking at you although i don't know if it ever really looked like i'm looking at where the webcam was <laughs> it might not look like i'm ever talking directly to you and i don't know how often i'm gonna try to look at this webcam but uh that's going to be a little difference today and i'm sure i'm going to have to repeat this a couple times could I be a skewed dolphin? <laughs> yes, we are a bit skewed today. Uh, this is the same room that I'm in. This is just a different angle of the room, so appreciate more of the sense of geography of this room. Uh, but we are here. Uh, we are going to be playing One Deck Dungeon. Uh, let's take a look at some achievements, because I guess you can't see that on screen because it's popping up the Steam window. But I do have a lot of achievements here, but I don't have all achievements. Win a game on fearless difficulty I have not done. Fill all the spaces on a hero progression sheet. We've been working towards that. Fill all the spaces of all the core hero progression seat sheets. We're certainly working on that. Reach the boss after covering every challenge boss, every challenge box in each encounter you face in the dungeon. This is called Flawless Dungeon Crawl. We've yet to do that because we've had to certainly have to forego certain squares but we could try to do that at some point defeat a three dot dungeon boss on fearless difficulty with hero progression disabled so we'll in order to unlock that one we'll have to disable hero progression but if we disable hero progression we can't actually fill out the sheets teetotaler win a game without drinking a potion apparently i have not won that one yet which is surprising there's maybe i could try to avoid using potions in this one hello licky how are you doing today Unencumbered, win a game without claiming an item as loot. Untrained, win a game without claiming a skill as loot. Obviously, I've always taken items and skills, and it's going to be rather tough to try to get uh, those both at the same time. Noob, win a game at experience level 2 or lower. Interesting. I have won one at level 3, but never at level 2. No easy prey, win a game without facing any encounters that have fewer than 3 experience. Interesting. That one will be difficult if we only reveal dungeon or only reveal encounters that are too experienced do you even lift win a game only claiming strength through items and skills and only using strength or free skills interesting and then there's those for agility and mana as well am i reading i'm reading the achievements i have not gotten yet cheapskate win a game only claiming and using free skills interesting Gauntlet Perfection. Win a gauntlet run in just five games. We only, we've only done one gauntlet. It took me two months to two or three months to complete, and it took me eight games, I believe. Gauntlet Champion. Win a gauntlet run on fearless difficulty. Fully planted. Fill all the spaces of all of the Forest of Shadows heroes progression sheets. Forest Gauntlet Victor. Win the Forest of Shadows gauntlet mode. 
And then there's six hidden achievements remaining. So there's a variety of, of achievements that we probably should start working towards in order to, you know, claim that I'm a one deck dungeon expert. So, I mean, obviously we're, one of the things we have to work towards is filling out all of the progression sheets for the core hero as well as Forest of Shadows. I don't know if the um, two or three extra heroes really count, but they probably might be a hidden achievement. Win a game on Fearless Difficulty, though, I might be able to do that tonight. We actually accidentally picked Fearless last week because I hit this button without realizing. We start a game with no potion tokens, but as we found out, if we uh, pick the healing focus, then the prepared talent start each game with an extra potion. That still triggers, so you don't have any extras. But you have that one. Um, but certainly only one potion as opposed to the one you start with or one from leveling up if you pick novice. Certainly would hinder things a bit. So what would be the best hero to work towards this? My best luck has generally been with Kaliana and the druid. I believe the druid's the one that does healing. No, never mind. Not, not the druid. It's the alchemist. Sorry. These are the two heroes that I am undefeated on. So let's actually pick both of these just to... We'll either have our first losses with both of them or we'll win on Fearless Difficulty. So Kaliana in team mode has only four mana through dice. Her um, hi hidden talent? Secret talent? I forget what this is called. The first two times a heart would be placed on Kaliana each turn or boss round. Spend time instead. If Kaliana would take damage, the game ends. So she doesn't need potions to heal as much. Uh, she could still benefit from other potion effects, of course. And any extra health in Kaliana does not matter because if she would ever take damage, even if she does have hit points, the game ends. And her extra t extra skill is Fairy Fire. Spend X mana, gain a X strength or X agility. Your partner may increase one of their dice by one, and this can be used in combat encounters including the boss. So I've been de focusing on aggression for her for no real reason other than she doesn't really need healing and I kind of just picked aggression because the fearlessness skill, which I've not actually gotten yet, oddly, um, would let her roll a heroic die uh, for in any combat encounter or bosses. All right, thank you, Team Orchid. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, but we do have Endless Assault with her. Reroll two dice. So at least if she gets bad rolls, she can use that. And that's only in combats as well. And Alchemist, uh, we have her healing. We don't have anything else for her. She has the basic skills. She has extra health. She has prepared. So we're starting the game with an extra potion, regardless of Fearless. And first aid, when you use a potion, heal one damage. And this only pertains to the alchemist. So, not that it would benefit Kaliana, but if Kaliana uses a potion to change her dice, alchemist would not regain a hit point. If alchemist uses a potion to increase one, two of her dice by one, then Kaliana would not regain a hit point. So it has to be a potion used on alchemist. Uh, however, as we see here with alchemist, her hidden talent spent potion potion <laughs> spent potion tokens are placed here and you can spend them ignore healing effects when using a potion token from here and that isn't going to benefit from first aid because you have to ignore healing effects her her skill deadly chris x mana for every two mana spent up to six you or your partner may roll strength or roll agility and that's a combat skill again she starts with one combat, one agility, two mana. So we're starting this game with one strength, one agility, six mana. And so we don't really need any mana dice. We're kind of very good on that. But the nice thing about Deadly Chris is that we can roll extra strength or agility based on how much mana we spend. And Kaliana can spend her mana to gain a strength or agility. However, these only work in combat encounters. So if we face a peril that is only a strength or agility option, we're going to be pretty out of luck. So we're going to need to really get strength and agility if I'm going to use this team. Uh, hello, Lock and Cant. How are you doing tonight? 
So since we're very mana focused, mana skills might be useful. Force Bolt is basically another uh, fairy fire. And again, can only be used on combat encounters. You swear Dolphin's Dive is the only show you can watch without taking any risks of being late for work. I mean, I guess because I'm, you know, Friday nights makes it a little uh, harder to miss work. Enjoying two mixed drinks. I am enjoying a Seagram's. This one is Jamaican me happy. The Jamaican me happy. I don't really like alcoholic flavored drinks. I like things that are sweet. Uh, so let's see. So things that are strength or agility aren't going to be as useful. Ingenuity, however, increase one of your dice by one. Um, could help in peril encounters. Can't be used on bosses, though. Inventiveness is a peril auto skill. If choosing a peril option would cost more than one time, reduce it to one time. So the risky option, not the risky, the safest options that cost three time, we could use more easily. Piercing Blast, reduce, reduce the difficulty of each armor box by one, but only in combats. Um, so the choices are between Force Bolt, Ingenuity, and Inventiveness, really. And I guess the question, the next question really is, or the question I should ask first is, am I going to do the Dragon or am I going to do the Mudlands? And the Dragon's Cave requires a lot of strength. Mudlands, however, you see, we do need strength here, but once we get to the higher floors, mana is a bit more important. And the boss, well, it's equally mana and strength focused, but um, we don't need as much agility there. Whereas the dragon, I guess is, <laughs> wait, these look pretty similar. Um, mana and strength and agility, okay. But let's see, the dragon, heroic dice cannot be placed on skull boxes. The mud golem at the start of each round, exile four dice. I do think we want to go with difficulty one, or star one, one star whatever, one diamond. I don't know what the official term is, but let's stick with one of these. It's actually been a while since I've done one of these. I think we did it. We did a dragon in the gauntlet, um, but I've mainly been focusing on higher level things. So I'm gonna go ahead and ask you guys, dragon or and this is the golem, right? Yes, mud drawn. Which do you want to see tonight? Wiki votes for mud golem. Let's wait for someone else to pipe in. Muddy buddy. All right, we're going to do mud golem. So, strength is a little more important. There is, a sh there is an armor there. There's no armor on the backside. Pipe! What's pipe? I don't know what pipe means, but pipe! Pipe, migrant pee! Pipe! Ice hoodie. Yeah, this is my OSU hoodie from when I went to OSU for grad school. Um, did, all right, so we're fighting the mud golem. It's ma mana focused with some strength. So... And then we have armor four here, five here, six here. So what do we want here? I think we want to take one inventiveness because I mean, we have two basic skills. So one inventiveness. Oh, you said to pipe in. Okay, now I understand. I need to listen to myself more. Alchemist doesn't have as much mana, especially when she's using deadly Chris. So maybe I want to go ingenuity here. Since she's the one that has strength and agility and two mana, whereas Kaliata only has four mana, once we get to parallel encounters that require strength or agility, then ingenuity would most benefit Alchemist, most likely. All right, so forest deck or hybrid deck? We've been doing a lot of hybrid decks, so let's just stick with forest. That way, once we roll for poison, we will always remove a, potion, a poison token. We'll always remove a potion token. Oh, geez. That would be a super hard mode. And then, let's see. Cure and aid. Antidote. Fortune. Rewind. I think aid of the four. I'm going to go with aid. This can be used anywhere. All right. So here's my attempt at doing a fearless dungeon with Kaldiana and Alchemist in the Mudlands. Let's go.
All right. Oh my gosh, these are all forest doors. Oh my gosh. <laughs> all right, entering here. Oh boy, we start with the wisp, which, I mean, for once we actually have like enough mana, <laughs> but the problem is that uh, we don't really have anything for the other colors. But um, is that a big deal? I mean, we do have one strength and one agility that we might be able to utilize. Um, but do we dare do this right now? I'm, I'm going to just flee. Let's just see that we have the wisp there and then let's come back later. All right. And now we have the Poison Cloud, which it's always a one time, so it's not actually going to do anything. Uh, we are very safe with mana, so we might as well go and contain it. Unfortunately, the item is actually even more mana, but we can do it easily enough. One, four, five, six, two, three. So we have the four, and then we can cover the nine. Easy peasy. That's not undo, let's end encounter. Alright, so the item is a bit of a waste. The skill, spend an agility to roll a strength and gain an agility 4. Or I could just go for the experience, and I think I kind of just want to go for the experience. It does take me halfway to level 2. But, let's see how bad of a decision that was. We have the null. Which is a pretty bad encounter because it takes no mana. Cannot place heroic dice on dungeon challenge boxes. Which means this 4 and 5. We only have the 1 strength die and the 1 agility die, but we can certainly come up with some numbers of agility and strength through Fairy Fire and Deadly Chris. But I'm going to just flee for a second. See what's behind door number 4. Door number 4 has a peril. And it's a bad one, because there's no mana here. Ah. Um, so, bear in mind, though, I do have Kaliana here. So, if I do have to take a consequence, Kaliana's happy to take consequences, because she'll just spend time instead. So if I go for clear a path, I'm, or I mean, well, either option, I'm not going to be able to do it. But if I go for clear a path, I'll spend one time because of uh, inventiveness. And one time will be spent unless I manage to roll a four with the strength. We'll take two hearts and one poison. Uh, we could the, the hearts have to be spread evenly, so Kalyan will take one, but that gets prevented. Alchemist takes one, and that will be stuck. And then a poison, which I could throw on Kalyana, because really, she's the one that I don't mind losing poison rolls with. Because when she would take two hearts of damage through poison, we'll spend two time instead. Uh, so I think then that we might as well do it just to get this agility die. And did I get my four? I got a one! I can increase it by one! And it's still bad! <laughs> Alright, well, there we go. So I did not get the one for covering every encounter boxes. We're not getting that achievement today, but we did get an agility. I'm going to give that to Alchemist because ingenuity. Granted, we don't have um, perils right now, but we could have we could be more likely to pick an agility-based peril now. Alchemist and Fairy don't work that well together. Well, I mean, Fairy Fire and Deadly Chris will actually work very well um fairy fire will let kaliana turn a number of mana dice into a strength or agility which we could certainly utilize in versus the null deadly chris can turn six mana into three strength or agility dice so really it's not too too bad um on that note, maybe we want to take the golem for a spin. Because there's not really too much in the way of consequences against the knoll. It's two two hearts, two poison, two time total. We have to cover the armors, but we can certainly 
finagle that through various means. So let's take the null for a spin. 1114, that's a pretty bad roll, but we do have endless assault to undo some of this. Very good strength and agility, agility rolls there, and let's have Kalyana re-roll some of this, because it's pretty bad. Five and three. Now, granted, these don't immediately help out, but I can either turn them to heroics or to a strength or agility. But we do have something to cover the three, something to cover the four, and I can spend my six mana here and we can roll numbers of strength and agility and certainly strength is a little more important you pushed a button and a thing happened oh boy oh boy did the thing happen did the thing happen Available soon trademark. Is it officially soon trademark or is it officially available? Oh, it's just soon trademark. Oh man. <laughs> Let's be like, all right, guys. <laughs> Who's looking forward to Oblivion on stream? Well, yeah. I was going to be surprised if it was that fast, but. Soon trademark. You saw Oblivion and was about to peace out. <laughs> Alright, back to this game. Um, so Kaliana can get a 3 agility through Fairy Fire. So I want to get strength, and Fairy Fire is also going to let Alchemist increase one of her dice by one. So I think we want Alchemist to roll 3 strength. We are certainly in a bit of a conundrum, because these 3 dice will never be enough to cover the 7, the 4, and the 5. But let's... First, see what we have. <laughs> a one, a two, and a three. Oof. Unless my stream was the launch party. We wouldn't launch it during your stream. Oh, man, that would be a big surprise, though. Well, all right. So there's a six. And now I need to figure out what's going to happen here. So certainly we're kind of very bad with the strength here. And I could throw all of these into the seven. Or I could keep the three to use eight on, but uh, that would only just stop a time. Um, so, oh, actually, no, I want to keep one of these because Fairy Fire will trigger and increase it. And the thing that stinks is that I want a two, but I could get that by putting a three in there. So that covers those squares. But there's a, actually, the conundrum here is I can't cover these with heroic dice anyway. So maybe I don't exactly want to do that. Maybe what I want to do, instead of increasing, or this is not far enough back. Instead of increasing the one, I want to increase the three so I can at least cover, or no, wait, you know what? I forgot. I Let's actually put the three there. Okay. I forgot that that was there. Um, so the four could just go there right now. So if I increase one of these by one, if I increase this one, that makes this into four. So I just need three here, which we could accomplish with Fairy Fire. But the problem is if I want to utilize a Heroic die, I can't really accomplish that. But really, I can't utilize Heroics right now anyway. Or can I? Wait. Or no, this is going to turn into a Strength, so I still need to cover the Agility and then... Yeah, so I could only accomplish that now with the heroic die. But I think... Okay, we can leave the four uncovered, and that's fine. But now I can cover the five. There we go. And now I'm only spending one time in consequences. Yay! All right, so Alchemist is at their item limit. Potion, roll a strength and gain a, a strength three. 
can be used in perils, which empowers perils. An alchemist's thing loves potions, so I should take the potion, I think. And heal the alchemist, because reasons. How about at the end of the stream? That way, Lock and Cat can get to play during his spring break. Or her spring break. I don't actually know. Um, okay, are we ready for the Wisp yet? We have one strength, two agility dice, deadly cruise, a fairy fire, but no extra mana. Now, let's explore a little more. And exploring, we'll do a poison roll, which we succeed. Technically, at the end of your spring break. Aww. Yeah, it's the end of my spring break, too. And I should have known that because we talked about that a couple days ago. All right. So because there's a mana choice here, this should be straightforward. So I need to get, let's see. So we need a five. We got that. All right. So we can cover the four and then we can cover the twelve. Whenever there's a mana peril, I'm not really too worried because we have lots of mana dice and we have ingenuity. All right. Um, I could get the strength die or I could just take the experience, which would give me a heroic die. I think that's better. Also gives me a potion. All right. So now with the heroic die, Wisp is a little more um, easier to face. But let's check out the other doors first. Ooh, Charmed Panther. I love him. Or, well, Panther, whose skill gives me Charmed Panther. I love the Charmed Panther skill because it's a free strength four or agility four. And the fixed number skills are awesome, especially when they're automatic. And since it is the mana route, I'm going to go and charm it. And um, since Alchemist has Ingenuity, we'll give the Heroic to Alchemist. And we're really... Unless this is an awful roll, but in fact, Aliana did this all by herself. So we're really done there. And we'll take the Charmed Panther skill. Neither of these people have strength or mana or strength or agility uses. Um but since I mean Endless Assault could re-roll the die. Fairy Fire could have the partner re-roll the die. And both of those would be in combat encounters. So, or not re-roll, but increase by one. So both of, or no, I don't want to re-roll, do I? No, I want to increase, oh, right. Yeah, these are two different things. Let me take a step back and say, hello, and welcome to Delphin's Dive, the weekly strategically minded stream where I don't misspeak. Endless Assault is a re-roll, Fairy Fire is an increase by one. Let's give Alchemist the increase by one because then we can turn the four into a five when needed. Oh, hey, it's another null. We've gone through this before. The first null gave me a what? Brawn? Yeah. This one's giving me Adept. Two mana to roll a strength and an agility, and you can discard one of them. Or a strength item. So enter. And... Um, give this to Kaliana because... Fairy Fire possible uses... Now, heroics cannot be used on the four or the five, so bear that in mind. But Charmed Panther can trigger. Um, this is a pretty poor roll overall, though. But uh, let's see. Deadly Chris, we can only spend up to six mana, which we have an excess of. But I could get a heroic one, which could mitigate that a bit. Uh, Charmed Panther, obviously we want to trigger, um, convert to, if we get a, if we get an agility four, we can cover the agility square. This three can cover the strength armor. Uh, let's, let's use Endless Assault on the two manas that are two. Maybe we'll get better roll here. Four or five. Okay. That's certainly better. Um, mm -hmm. I think we should just do Deadly Chris and see what we get first. 
Uh, so we need a variety of things. The problem is that it's not really clear what we need the most. I mean, we obviously need way more strength than we currently have, so we probably want to do some number of strength. Um, we can use Fairy Fire. Or Charmed Panther can give me a 4. Fairy Fire we can use to get a 5, and then the Agility side is covered. So I'm just going to roll the Strength, I guess. Hoping to get a 5, which we got a 6, which... If I do Charmed Panther for the 4, that's covered. I could put the 3 in there for now. Fairy Fire can increase the die by 1, which can give us that 4. And then once all the dungeon side is covered, we can use Heroics for the rest, which that's a 1. Um, or no, I, I, I was going to use a 4 there, wasn't I? Well, it doesn't really 100% matter then. Well, if I do a 6 there, then I get a 6 strength that I could put there. And then I should have enough heroics to cover the agility side. All right. So let's take the die and give it to Alchemist again. And now I think we are 100% ready for Wisp. All right, that one is terrible. So other than that mana one, we do have the, the mana side cover. So let's re-roll the... Actually, no, let's just re-roll. Oh, I have to re-roll two, okay. Well, if one of these is a one, that stinks. Oh no, oh no! The one in 36, oh no! Oh well. Well then. What do we do now? Uh, let's see, let's cover up what we can. I think the threes are more important to cover because they're double effects. Uh, we can cover the strength. We can cover... Let's cover the one that's a heart of damage. Charmed Panther might as well use for the agility, so we can cover the poison as well. Fairy Fire can increase this to a 2, but then Fairy Fire gives me something that... Wouldn't be good for anything anyway. Um, hmm... So, yeah, so let's do Fairy Fire. Increase my heroic. Or no, I didn't want to do that, did I? I don't know, I guess the heroic is better, because... That. Do I want to potion? I think, because it's only one poison and two time, I'm not really too worried. I mean, I am the alchemist, so three potions is really like six potions, but this isn't really a timed potion, I don't think. I can, however, get a heroic too. And use Deadly Chris, just for the chance of getting a three. But of course we wouldn't. That's it. That's okay. I feel like this was this was the same the same decision we had last time. Uh
I'm going to take strength dice. All right, so we're approaching the end of the floor. But Kaliana is very good at dealing with the end of the floor because she doesn't take damage. Unless, right here, she takes two damage, but that turns into two time anyway. Um, I stay on the floor. Yeah, that does the damage. So that didn't really mean too much. But yeah, let's definitely give the damage to Kaliana. But bear in mind, she can only take one more damage without the game ending. She, Kaliana works really well with the end of the floor because... When there's three hearts on here, it converts to one damage on a hero, but if Kalyana takes it, then it turns into a time. So really, it's more like if you can p put up to two time on this, or, well, there will always be a per perpetual heart on there or whatever, but... All right, the sharp cliffs, which we can fly over. I think we'll do that, because we do have a number of dice. But that is a pretty bad start. We do have a four. Could increase the die by one, but didn't really need it. That was fine. All right. Uh, mana and heart, but an alchemist is the one who wants the heart most. Auto skill, roll a strength. This can be used in perils. Roll a strength, you may discard it to gain a heroic three which is a pretty good skill, or for experience, which puts me halfway to level three. But level three um, doesn't really give extra heroic dice, it just gives extra items and skills. So I'm gonna take the skill, and let's give it to Alchemist, because then we could use Ingenuity when we need to. And now combat, or uh, strength perils are going to be interesting, because we have three dice, we have Clever Smash, which can be used, and Ingenuity can help that. So we're basically guaranteed a Heroic 4 on Perils, or a Strength 5 or 6. I mean, bear in mind, I can't roll a Strength if I'm not in a Strength Peril. But... Alright, Spike on Spikes. Add Poison to the Consequences for each 5 die on this card. There's no mana here. So this is going to be a bit risky. We do have three three strength and two agilities. Which we, have, we need two more strength and one more agility to fully cover the board. But Dudley Chris and Fairy Fire, Charmed Panther, Clever Smash. We might be fine. Let's risk it for a biscuit. We also have Brawn. So the mana rolls are only really going to influence Fairy Fire or Deadly Chris or Heroics. However, we had some pretty bad rolls, so. Uh, what do we want here? Our agility is atrocious. Let's do Clever Smash first to decide what this is. It's a five. I'm going to keep it. Uh, I hit end encounter. That was not the button I wanted to press. Uh, Endless Assault. I'm definitely going to re-roll that strength. I'm going to re-roll the mana one. Oh my gosh, the one in 36 on the other side! Two sixes! Ah! Okay, so strength is now a bit better. I uh, don't ha have a four yet, but we could Charmed Panther if needed. And a three, well, we could do that if needed. Agility, we need the three there. So we need a agility four, agility five, strength four. So let's... All right, Charmed Panther gives me a strength four. So let's put a six in the Deadly Chris and roll all agilities on Alchemist because Fairy Fire could trigger. And we get a six, which goes there. Fairy Fire will give me a four. And if I fairy fire for a strength, then that. And the best part about this is that there are no fives on this card. Perfect. A precise blow. One strength, gain a five strength and two agility. Fixed number skill. Uh, but 
Um, Alchemist is full on dice. Kaliana isn't, or sorry, is fixed on skill. Is full on skills. Kaliana has no skills, um, but only has one strength die to spend, and can only gain extra strength through fairy fire. Um, Alchemist has lots of means of getting strength, but is at her, she's at their their skill limit. The item is agility, and it's probably worth getting because we do want. Some, imp some uh, base strength and agility skills. Agility is the weakest at the moment. Let's go ahead and give Aliana the agility die. Oh no, I spent time. All right, we're done on this floor. So now we're on floor two, so mud shell. On perils, there's a five die on combats there's a four armor but it's mana so not too bad of a deal the starfinder game is taking time to get going yeah you're still here the poison cloud let's uh contain it because it's mana kaliana with a ridiculous roll and Alchemist almost getting another ridiculous roll, but uh, rolled a one. But whatever, it's good enough. All right. So both heroes are their item limit. Alchemist is at their skill limit. Spark, spend three mana, roll a mana, then increase it by two. Basically means uh, you get a chance to re-roll a die without worrying about it being too low. There is, in fact, one combat card that does not allow you to uh, increase dice, but I'm going to take it anyway. Now everything is going to convert to experience in one way or another. Shadow Stalker, Dark Aura, spend time for each six rolled. Oh, by the way, you need sixes in this encounter. All right, Agility and Heart, or use another skill without paying for it, spend time, or for experience. And I wonder how transmute works if you're going to use like fairy fire or deadly chris where it's dependent on what the number is. Um, I don't know if there's like an FAQ on this. Hey dragon, I am doing fine. How are you doing tonight? We're going to enter it. And we'll see what happens. There are two sixes. And no sixes. So our mana roll was actually pretty bad, and we have to cover all the mana squares. Um, let's actually start with Endless Assault. Let's do the re-rolls out of the way. It gets us another four, so... Pretty inefficient, but we do have those. Fairy Fire could increase this by one. Let's do Clever Smash, see what we get here. Get a one, so we're definitely going to convert that to a Heroic Three. Spark, if I spend three mana, I roll a mana die. Um, you could spend more than one mana die here, but I have a three, but I also have a two I could spend a two but i'd have to come up with an with a one which i'd have to waste other dice so i'm just gonna spend the three on this and see what this is it's a three which increases by two so that gives me the armors covered so now that the armors are covered i can worry about other squares we have a strength six two strength threes that aren't gonna do anything we have two agility fives I can increase one of them to a six via fairy fire. Fairy then has this remaining five that's not going to do much, but I can convert it to a heroic for fairy fire because we do need a strength five. Um, and Charmed Panther will give me a four. We do need to worry about that a man of five, I guess. But for now, let's. We do still have Dudley Chris, though. 
Yeah, let's do. We should do Dudley Chris first. Um, these threes, they're not going to do anything right because all of those are fours and fives. So let's do this. I, it's going to be risky because I could roll sixes, which will spend time. But but we do have the agility covered, so I'm going to just roll strengths. And we rolled a four, four, five, which is actually perfect. Um, ish. It's perfect ish, except I can't cover both the five and the six now. Well, no, wait, hold on. We do have that. Oh, but fairy fire I can't utilize now. Um, so I can get a heroic five, which covers the mana. But now I can't cover that six. I could put that mana there if I can get a mana four. But my dice are too low to benefit from that. Or to be able to utilize that. The strengths are perfect. The mana, I mean, we have a four on a strength. We have a six, on, or a, sorry, a four on a, a five on a four and a six on a four. So we could try to bump those, but we need to find a four through some other means. Um, I convert this to a heroic five and then I throw it into fairy fire because this is I think one of those is Kalyana's um, then we can whoops then we can get a agility six and we can increase the die by one so if I If I can get a, a, a heroic four, <laughs> or no, wait. So the plan is to get a, or, or hmm. I'm I'm overthinking here. So let's get a heroic here, and let's get a heroic on Kalyana, and then throw that into fairy fire to get an agility six. Increase this heroic to a four, and then when I remove the strength dice. I can move one of the manas over, put the heroic four on that, and then I can recover the squares I just released, but now I can put the agility there. There we go! We covered everything! Just took a bit of thought. Now the question is, how many of you saw that solution five minutes ago and I'm just slow? Alright, Alchemist is at their skill limit. Do I want to give this to Kaliana because she has a free skill? Um... Can at least use spark for it. I'm curious how fairy fire would work, but we'll find out, I guess. So now I'm maxed on items and skills, so everything else is going to work towards experience. We have the rope bridge, which we can easily bolster. I'm not really too fussed about choosing the time-based skills because we have inventiveness. You didn't see anything as you were distracted by Oblivion possibilities, thanks to Migrant P. Oh, that was the true secret, was that John was trying to distract from the lewd stream. Because he's bitter at the fact that we're more popular than Candelabra Live. That's a joke, because he, he actually gets higher viewers, or more views. Alright, um, I think we're equal on strength and agility, so I don't really want to swap... These strengths are both to experience. The skill is a reroll, basically, but I'm gonna just take, take the experience because. All right. Oh my gosh! It's the Mosculum. Add two times the consequences for each heroic on this card. Okay. I like the awareness skill. Reduce the difficulty of each challenge box by one in peril encounters, where it's kind of like the most important because you have the fewest dice. 
but I am filled up on items and skills. I could probably replace transmute with that because I don't know. Let's see. Let's enter. And give it to Alchemist. I guess Kaliata might want heroics at some point, but we have this. We have that. Okay. So no well, so we need to avoid putting heroics on Moscow on so any heroics that we're choosing to use. Hey RPD. Any heroics we choose to use should be put on the on the um dungeon challenge boxes. Let's do the rerolls, I think. Um endless assault on the mana ones. Gives me two mana fives, that's perfect. Um I want to see first what happens if I hit transmute. I then do fairy fire. Okay. Because it's dependent on what number is used here. It doesn't it's like it's it's basically saying I didn't put any mana into it, so I'm just gonna do the second part. But I could use spark for free. Well, it's not really free, I'm spending time. Uh so I, I was just curious about how that worked. Um hmm. Well, we have an agility six. We don't have an agility five. We have a mana six. We have a mana five. Uh, let's do clever smash because that's a real roll skill. I want to make sure I get all the roll skills out of the way. And let's keep that because it's a good strength die. Um, I don't have a mana three, so I don't think I want to use spark. Uh... Fairy Fire could give me strength or agility as needed. And my partner could increase the die by one. Well, if I take agility and I use Fairy Fire, I can get a strength out of this. I can increase the agility by one, and now all the agility squares are covered. Uh, so I just want to make sure I don't put... So I need to keep that five. I need to keep a four. I need to avoid putting heroics here. I do have this heroic six, which I guess means I don't need to worry about saving that five. And then all the squares are covered. All right. Well, I'm not really too interested in transmute, really. So I'm just going to replace transmute with awareness and now perils are even easier so we're we're kicking butt here display prow prowess would be the mana but that's for the skill the item however is mana i don't really care about mana the skill forest blessing reroll a die gain a heroic one which a heroic one could be used in whatever skill requires a single die, but we don't have those. So I think we just want the experience, so I'm just going to display prowess to get that. Murphy's Law. <laughs> now we're... So remember that we now have the awareness skill. So I'm not really too worried about the degree of those numbers there. I could hit awareness, and now it's 10, 3, and 4. That doesn't really change much, though, other than I can put a 4 on this spot. But, there. What about those constant snake eyes? <laughs> Alright, I'll take the experience, and this, in fact, levels me up. I'm at four potions, full health, no poison. I haven't had too many potion choices just yet. Uh, that's another skill. So, poison snap. Before the encounter, convert one poison on a hero to heart. Well, you know what? I don't have one. I need combats. A lot of combats. I don't need agility. The good news is Charmed Panther is an easy choice here. But, um, let's see. Clever Smash. Definitely keeping that. Um, Endless Assault. Let's reroll the manas. Alright, two fours. That's good. So the four, the four. Take the that um deadly chris 
Yeah, let's spend six there, roll six strengths, or three strengths. By the way, we've used all the strengths. But now all the strengths are fully covered. Three, three, four, four, five, five, six. Done. So, the item is a mana, a skill, roll a... Uh, spend a strength, roll a strength, increase the die by one. Interesting. Um... Not really. I mean, like, you could spend your worst strength to basically re-roll it, and then you can also increase the die by one, which I guess th that effect is nice. Oh, Nisaj, Adagur. The Alchemist and the Fairy. I chose these because these are the two heroes that I'm undefeated with, and we're trying to get the achievement for beating a dungeon on Fearless Difficulty. Which I've surprisingly not done yet. Um, yeah, so I don't want the mana skill. Let's give this to Alchemist because she has more strength potential. Oh boy. The rock worm. Acid spray. Before the encounter, place a poison on a hero. Pollyanna will take it. And sixes, that's good. No sixes, okay. Let's roll the strength. Ooh, six, I'll keep it, I think. Yeah. Um. I could do spark because I could replace this two and the one with something that could become more than a two and a one. Uh, but let's think first. I gotta cover that strength. I gotta cover this mana. And then I don't need agility. So yeah, so this is obviously I'm gonna get that four. Um. Let's do Endless Assault on the 2 and the 1. Get a 5 and a 1. Okay. So then, I think what I'm going to do with that, I'm actually going to steal that 1, take an Agility 1, give the Heroic to Alchemist, and spend it on Blitz, because another Strength die. Now I can increase the die by 1, which... The mana's done. Like, we have... If I put this 5 there, then I have enough mana for the 12. So it's really about the strength. And we have to have three fives, which we only have two right now. So I'm going to... I mean, I do still have Fairy Fire, though. Let's increase one of those. Uh, so six. Let's deal with the mana. Um... Could save the six, which is nice because it's actually Kaliana's die. Five, five, four. And I don't even need to, but. Yeah, let's actually just do a heroic. Your favorite at the moment would be the archer in which. To which T Morgan says, Archer? We played the archer last week and we lost. Twice. So, uh, yeah. Ooh, interesting. Faint. Spend two agility, prevent a heart, and gain an agility six. Which, unfortunately, we're kind of... Agility is a scarce resource right now, so I'm probably going to avoid that. The item is mana and heart. But I could take the experience and get four. I've been avoiding mana skills, or mana items, because, well, we, we have six mana at base, so, um, and if I take the item, then time gets spent, so I'm just going to take the experience then. 
Time passes. I could enter this door, but first I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna explore so I get these doors here. Um Because Kalyan is fine with the end of the floor, so I'm gonna maximize the doors I can get. Yeah, Archer is hard. But I think I was just using her basic skill too often. Alright, uh, remove crystal, but I do have, like, we are very well set up with strength, actually, despite having only three strength at base. Alchemist can get an extra strength, and that could turn into a heroic three at worst, and Blitz, where I could spend my worst strength to roll another strength and increase the die by one. Plus, we have awareness, so it's not really too much of a deal. I think the skill gain a, an agility three. I mean, agility three is not really too, too powerful, but I... I'm just kind of avoiding manas. Let's take the skill. Move the crystal. And see what happens. Um, six, okay. <laughs> Using all, all my good luck in bad places. Uh, Alchemist is at their skill limit, so Kaliana will take it. And we'll take the damage. The Moss Golem add two times the consequences for each heroic on this card. Okay. Fives. Mana six. We need to get an agility six, but um, fairy fire would do that for us. And that'd be fine, because we'd still have Kalyana's five for that. Um, well, okay, free. Um, so that obviously wants to go there. So I guess we could put the five there. Um, we could make sure that heroic five goes there. We could try to put that four there. So we currently need two more strength for that. Oh yeah, I also have Charm Panther, by the way, which we'll cover that. So I just need two more strength. By the way, I have Clever Smash. Well, I guess I can't use that to get a heroic now. And that wasn't a good roll anyway. But I can keep that and throw it into Blitz. Which is good enough. And that can actually increase that die by one. And now we're good. All right. Devastate. Spend two strength. Gain a strength six uh, agility four mana four. Spend time. Which in a boss fight means you exile a die, but we're fighting the Mud Golem, who exiles a bajillion dice. Alchemist is cheating hard right now, and I love it. Um, let's give this to Alchemist. Because it's a heart, it's blah blah blah. Aliana can afford it. Aliana can afford it. This is the whole end of floor routine with Kaliana. All right. Uh, well. I guess, I mean, I could go for the experience. It does take me halfway towards level four. I'm gonna go for the experience. I might as well go the mana route. Although with Clever Smash and Blitz, it might actually be a better deal strength. Uh, but no, we'll go mana. Because this is the name of the team, is Team Mana. And Awareness lowers everything by one, so I can use the three and the four and cover the ten. Alright. Done. The legend of Team Mana. Uh, yeah, take the experience. 
I'm happy with my skills right now. I'm going to swap out awareness once we get to the end of floor three, of course, but... Because I can't use awareness on the boss. I'm aware of that. Giant spider. Web. Before the encounter, spend time for each poison in the party. We have none. All right. We haven't come across too many potions. This, what was the thing here? Oh, no. We have the alchemist, and we've not found too many potions. That's annoying. Okay. Well, we did not get a mana six. Uh, agility is not going to be good for anything, so I might as well just take strength here. Um, let's roll a strength die. It's a two, so we might as well swap it for the heroic. Um, let's put a strength in here to roll that. Get a six. Increase the die by one. Which, if I increase this four, I could then utilize fairy fire to increase it to a six. So I can cover the mana six. Um... So that's my current goal there. That mana wants to go there. Strength. Strength. And I don't have a strength five. All right, Swiftness Aura is a free three for some purpose. Um, I can put that there, I guess. Pirate Savvy is raiding with a party of ten. Hello, Pirate Savvy, and welcome to Dolphin Sive, the weekly strategically minded and a lobra stream hosted by yours truly, Lou Dolphin. Am I winning? Yeah, I'm actually kicking butt here. I think I'm gonna re-roll these manas. Get a six and a two. That's good. The six can go there, which means this five is now not gonna do too much. That mana can go there. And now what? Uh, let's roll two strengths because we're the Deadly Chris. Get a four and a five. Hello. That's exactly what I wanted. Expect no less. Amazing how I could do that without slipping up. Or who are you talking to? Pirate Savvy or me? Uh, three experience levels me up, and stone skin spend three mana, prevent a heart I don't really care about. So let's take the three mana and level up. All right, we are at the end of floor two, and we're already at level four. So. Rotten depths. If it encounters consequences, include a poison, add two time to them. Oh, doing my strategic thing? Because I've done it so many times that... It just rolls off the tongue now. You should watch the first 10 streams where I stumbled over my words so many times. It was actually a running joke. All right. Um, Aliana already has this. I'll take the item. I'll spend the time, but we want to get to the boss, I think, actually. Uh, and I'm going to just... I always just kind of, when I have two heroics, divide them evenly among the heroes. And Kaliana, once again, does this all by herself. But just to really show how crazy I am, I rolled only fours, fives, and sixes. And just to be completely overkill, I'm going to lower the difficulty of each box by one. I'm going to uh, increase my heroic five to a six. I'm going to put the... Oh, I guess, well, whatever. A little bit of a waste, but... Six, 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 five, five. Twenty-eight out of seven. We were super overkill. And I'll go ahead and take the mana now. Which boss am I on? I'm, I'm going to be fighting the Mud Golem. Which isn't going to be too hard with what I have now, but... I mean, I guess I do need to figure out getting Agility 5s, but it's okay. Thorn Spitter, Strike Down, or Evade Thorns. Um, I probably should focus... Mm -hmm. I'll go for Precise Blow. But we'll Strike Down. Boom, 
By the way, I need to swap out awareness if I get an opportunity. Uh, three, four, and can I do this right now? I can't, but I will, regardless of what roll that is. Now I can do it without spending the the heroic. Yeah, he's annoying because we keep spending dice each round, but. Yeah. All right. So precise blow. Let's take that one because it's a new one. It's a spider again. There's no poison on my party. And now Colony Auto rolled only one die that's above four. See, that's what I meant by all my luck got used up. Uh, clever Smash might as well. And that might as well turn into a Heroic 3 because it's essentially the same. Let's use Blitz maybe? Let's use Blitz. Actually, before I do that, let's think. Because I could use Deadly Chris. There's no um, no agilities. Now I could just use precise blow, so let's do that. I could use blitz through some other means. Swiftness aura is free. Endless assault could reroll dice. We certainly have lots of choices there. Uh, three, four, five, four. That covers all these shields. Um. That four could go there if we want it to. Six and a four. And lots of agilities that I can't really do much with, but I could get heroic five to cover one of those. I could spark to get another mana. I could endless assault to reroll two of these. Let's actually spend These. That gives me a six. Um, and then let's re-roll the two manas. So what did that do for me? Um, I can get a strength five through fairy fire. My partner could increase one of their dice by one. Oh, we still have blitz. Let's use blitz. So, probably the best way of doing that would be to get rid of this bad die there. Get a two. Well, all right. That's... Eh. But I could increase one of my dice by one. So, let's increase this one so that then the next step when I do fairy fire, I could increase that die by one. All right. Now we have that. And that covers everything. Pulverize, spend a strength, roll a heroic, and then increase it by one. Uh, fairy doesn't have too much in the way of strength. Let's just go for the agility then. Um, give that to Kaliana. Oh no, it's the vine trap. Uh, Agility might actually be the better option. We do have Clever Smash and Blitz, though. But Swiftness Aura is also a thing. Yeah, let's do Dodge Vines. Bad roll there. Decent roll. Awareness, swiftness. Ingenuity could increase a die by one. Cover the three. Let's increase this by one. Doesn't really matter though, but there. Efficiency. 
And we have a potion. Oh my gosh, we have a potion. But <laughs> I can't use it on the boss. Urgh. All right. We'll take the agility. Man, our first potion we found since like the first floor and it's not one we want right now. All right, we're at the end of the floor, but Kaliana is here, so it's not a big deal. Oh, hey. It's Groot. I mean, Trickster. Before the encounter, convert one poison. Guess what? We don't have any. Beautiful. A six of every color. And more sixes. Might as well. Um, let's reroll these two. I don't really know what I'm looking for here, but I'm going to use up all the skills and then I'm going to think about where I'm at. Um, I don't need agility. I feel like that's been a recurring theme here. Ooh, I'm going to keep that. Um, all right. We're probably very good, so let's just do this then. Three, three. Uh, I need to cover the other two. Shoot. Four. Oh, and then the mana. Four. Four. Six. 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 All right, we're done. <laughs> All right, this potion has already been identified. Both heroes are at their item limits. Um, and we certainly have an excess of agility. So let's actually swap out an agility. Let's just take that one. Oh, no. Strike down or evade thorns. Well, ooh, fireball. Hello. I want that one. We can replace endless assault, or not endless assault, awareness. Because we're definitely at the point where I should consider um, that. Let's evade the thorns. Hoping to roll a five. Did not get my five. Swiftness, reduce. Did I do this still? What? You just stole the die. You didn't even let me increase the die by one. Ugh, you annoying person. Increase this by one. Actually, what was I looking for a five? I'm, I forgot how math works. Barely did it. If you, you'll wonder if they'll make a water themed the dungeon. Curious how the Kraken would fight. Yeah, that would be amazing. All right, Aliana will take that. Um. Yeah, let's get the potion. I'm at six potions, which is actually the cap, so. Oh no, it's the rickety bridge. Oh no, it's another potion that I can't use on the boss. Oh man. So do I want to do this to get the agility dime? I don't think so. Because I can't... I could take the potion, but I'm capped on potions, so that's useless. I could take the experience, but it's not going to level me up. So I do, do I want the agility die when both heroes are at their item limits? Well, I have five agility dice plus swiftness aura. But the problem is that I need fives. 
I mean, I could probably get away with not covering that one, but... Alright, thank you, Team Orchid. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna flee. I think I'm gonna just settle with what I have. Now I have to exile dice. So, how do I make these decisions? The answer is I stuck. I stuck. I suck. I suck at this. So, we have the fewest strength dice, but we also have a lot of means of getting strength. But I should probably go away with removing two of those. One heroic. And I don't need agility as much, so we'll save the mana for now. This is, this is hard because I have to do this twice at least and if i can't cover all the squares and i don't do enough damage to the boss then i have to remove even more dice so let's hope that we can do this the first time through we got a six we got two sixes we have one five i have a six i can use there so, I don't, um, Blitz could increase the die by one. Precise blow, but doesn't help me get to that agility. Swiftness aura, whatever. Fireball, whatever. Um, where does that put me on strength? Five away. I do have a reroll here. Let's. Oh, where are we on the on the mana as well? One away. Hmm. I could charmed panther and use blitz in order to get an agility five. If I'm gonna do that, I might as well use like a heroic on blitz. So. Do that. This rolls a strength die, which doesn't do too much, but increases that. Gives me a five there, and I can actually spend that um, to get that. So there we go. Now I just need a one. Oh, look, there it is. We're done. By the way, we have six potions. Actually, this might be the the dungeon where we get through it without using a potion, ironically. Um, okay. I think we can get away with getting one mana away. We can get one heroic. And then I think... Um, I'm going to ditch two more agility. I just need three, di three agility dice or even heroics could suffice good game <laughs> and then I roll only ones all right there's the agility five agility six and two uh, two mana sixes so one of the manas wants to go there and we should put the best agilities there Um, all right, so let's pay attention to what dice we have left in our general supply because this actually super matters now. Two strength, two heroics. Um, so if I try to get an agility through Charmed Panther, I'm actually gonna have to discard a die, but um, that's I don't need to get the agility because all I need to do is increase that agility by one and I'm good. Let's take the strength option then. Now I have one strength die left. I could use Swiftness Aura, but I have a discard a die, so I'm not going to do that. Uh, fireball will give me a 5 and a 5. Um, unfortunately, Kaliana lacks the means of increasing dice. I do kind of have to think about getting that 6, but there's Fairy Fire, which we can utilize. Or Deadly Chris. But we do have to be careful that we still maintain enough mana for that. So, if I... Let's let's utilize Spark. See what we get. 
Yeah. All ones, twos, and threes get discarded. Would have been a bad one for that for sure. Um. In the conserved dice, I could put a four and a one into fireball and get five five. Although I probably should have saved that one and utilized it to get the strength six though. Actually, yeah, let's not do that. Um, let's utilize fairy fire. Yeah. I get a strength six and I could increase that by one. So now all I have to do is cover these remaining squares. Uh, so our mana, we're currently at at 15. Well, now I might as well utilize fireball. Oh, but I have to discard it. Okay, never mind. Undo that. Uh, we're out of strength dice, so be careful. Um, so if I want to utilize the strength for a different purpose, that would be excellent. We don't really have too many purposes for strength, though. Um, mm, and blitz could come in handy. Hmm. I mean, we also have aid and bronze, so it's not too big of a deal. But let's do precise blow. Oh man! Shoot, <laughs> we're out of agilities too. What? All right, let's turn the agilities into a heroic. Yay! And then precise blow. There we go. Now I have one agility left over, so we could Swiftness Aura. And we can utilize that to turn into a Heroic. Or what? That's a beautiful question. I'm out of strength again. Let's Blitz with that one. Okay, that's excellent, actually. Um, Let's make that a six. And now the strength is done. And I have one more heroic die left over. Yeah. All right. No potions used. We should get that achievement. We got teetotaler and we got fearless victory. Yeah. We managed to get the fearless victory. We defeated a dungeon on fearless difficulty and we defeated a dungeon without using a potion, ironically using the alchemist. So. Excellent. So this gives us 12 circles, which means that we can learn crafty. So now Alchemist can have one extra skill or item. We can also increase her healing, get recovery when she descends, heal one damage. And I might as well put the rest towards grit. Three more circles and we can learn grit for her after each boss round, heal one damage. Kalyan has 12 circles. And we can utilize them in, let's see, we're in aggression. We can utilize that to learn fearlessness. So a combat skill, roll a heroic die. Awesome. We can put the rest towards blind luck. Useful in combat and peril. Gain a strength two or an agility two or a mana two. Awesome. And we have five left over. Can almost get us bull rush. A combat thing reduce the difficulty of each large box by one. And honestly, I think I prefer that over blind luck. So I'm actually going to steal one of the circles from there. Bull Rush. Reduce the difficulty of each large box by one. Because um, Blind Luck, while it could be useful in perils, it's only a two. And twos aren't really going to make or break much. So Kaliana and Alchemist have now learned some useful abilities. And awesome. All right. That was an hour and a half. Wow. Wow. That wraps up the one deck dungeon part of the stream that lasted 92 minutes today. Time for the Sentinels part of the stream. And while I get that set up, I'm going to ask the question, who wants to participate in viewer's choice? So I also have to change the game. There we go. And I should open up a notepad so I can track the names here. 
So, who said so? RPD 234. Lockin can't licky zero zero nave shugs awesome we are playing with oblivion content so all of the oblivion environments champion studios fort adamant Marinian refuge uh mordengrad nexus of the void akash Thria, la commodora the harpy lifeline and luminary and they're missing banners um, I think is that because why is that? I think it's actually because reasons. Uh, so you're not going to be able to play with the variants today, but you can choose whatever you want. I think. Let me double check on this. Um, I don't. S I mean, there. Are all unlocked uh which means that they're just not here for reasons okay so question time rpd classic or team we're not playing oblivion proper we're only limited to classic or team classic all right lock and can't choose the villain licky three four or five heroes Nabe, choose hero number one. Uh, Dragon, do you want to participate? I'm just going to ask you a question. Whatever. You are forcibly being <laughs> volunteered because I believe you like to participate as well. So I'm going to add you to the list. Dragon 240. Uh, I had that question. Uh, RPD 234. Choose hero number three. Licky said four. So Lock and Can't choose hero number four. Licky, choose the environments. And then Nabe, standard, advanced, challenge, or ultimate. Okay. So. Do, 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 ba, ba. All right. Thanks for stopping by, Nisaj. Thanks for stopping by. I just said that. Hope you enjoyed your stay. All right. So where we are at is Iron Legacy, who's over here. Uh, Parse was hero number three. Hero one is Idealist. Who is Void Guard Idealist, so she's at the end. Uh, Akash Thria for hero two. Base environment metropolis or megalopolis. All right. Iron legacy is difficulty four. The advanced rule on the front: all damage dealt by Iron legacy is irreducible. On the back side, the first time Iron legacy will be dealt damage each turn, redirect the damage to the hero target with the highest HP. The challenge rule: at the start of the villain turn, the villain trash is shuffled and cards are revealed until an ongoing card is revealed and put into play. Other revealed cards are returned to the villain trash. So hero four went to Locking Camp. Who chooses Prime Warden Sergeant Adept. So we're just waiting on the difficulty and it's Don't Ultimate. Yes, please, don't ultimate. Standard. Sorry, I didn't mean to month the bike. Standard! So we're playing Standard Iron Legacy. Versus Void Guard the Idealist, Akash Thria, Parse, and Prime Warden's Arch and Adept in Megalopolis. I will never let down my guard. Justice must be dispensed to all. Now! If we beat up the villain quick, will we have time to get ice cream? I mean, it will be a quick game, Idealist, one way or another. All right, Void Guard the Idealist is starting with Bored Now, Bright Idea, Flying Stabby Knives, and Making Things Up. Akash Thria has, as the world turns, Healing Pollen, Instantaneous mat uh, matura Maturation, sorry, I can't read these cards, and Strangling Roots. Parse has Gauge, Quick Calculation, Targeting Arrow, and Updated Intel. Prime Warden's Arjun Adept has Drake's Pipes, Inventive Preparation, Polyphoric Flare, and Scherzo of Frost and Flame. 
So, if you're not familiar with Iron Legacy, he puts four ongoing cards into play at the start of the game. And at the end of the villain turn, he deals each hero target three melee damage. Which, by the way, increased damage dealt by Iron Legacy by one. This card is, ir is, ir is uh, indestructible. Demoralizing Presence, increased damage by one. Galvanized, decreased damage by one. Final Evolution, when this card enters play, deal one damage. By the way, this is increased by four. Or uh, increased by two, or uh, uh, three. It's increased by three to four. So, great start. And then Iron Fist Strike deals damage. And that. So, yeah, he has only 32 HP, but he can provide a lot of protection, or get a lot of protection. He also hits like a tank, especially when he has three plus ones. Like, what? It's only three damage? That's not too bad. Wait, why is he hitting me for six now? Okay, most of us are in the teens. Well, Idealist was technically a teenager already, but I mean, HP is in the teens. Yeah, so. Uh, galvanized. Increased damage dealt by Iron Legacy by one. This card is indestructible. You can never destroy it. And he started with two of them. Demoralizing Presence. Increased damage dealt by Iron Legacy by one. At the end of the villain turn, each hero target deals themselves one psychic damage. So, this one's not irreducible. Uh, I keep saying irreducible. Indestructible. So if we can destroy it, we probably should. And final evolution, when this card enters play, Iron Legacy deals each non-villain target one toxic damage. Whenever a hero uses a power, Iron Legacy regains two HP. So, uh, that's how he protects himself. So. We would like to get rid of some ongoing cards. So what ongoing destruction do we possibly have? Bored now, but there's no concepts in play, and that wouldn't destroy ongoings. Right idea p could put a concept from the trash into play, but there's none of my trash. Uh, flying stabby knives would basically not help out at all. Making things up, draw three, discard two, play any number of concepts, and then play a fragment. So I think that's the option. We get vivid thoughts, edgy hogs. And flying stabby knives. Unfortunately, not ones I wanted. I can play any number of concepts, and then I could play a fragment. So probably want to keep the concepts can, since I can play those. Not that it will last too long. So ordinarily against advanced iron legacy, I don't really like him dealing each hero target three melee damage on his flip side. He deals the hero target with the lowest HP, 3 melee damage. Oh, and we're only on standard. Okay, so we're on standard. We're not on advanced. I'm so used to playing on advanced. So we probably want to flip him as fast as we can, because then he'll just keep beating up Idealist. Actually, this is hero target, right? So actually, a Primordial Seed could soak that up. So once we have a flipped Iron Legacy, as long as we can keep a Primordial Seed out, we should be able to weather the storm. So to get him flipped... We have to reduce him to 20 or fewer HP, so we have to deal him 12 damage this turn if possible. Unfortunately, Flying Stabby Knives doesn't actually increase damage, it just deals X targets 2 psychic damage each. So, um, I'm going to get rid of board now. Vivid Thoughts. Search for more. So, I guess Brett Idea could... <laughs> Actually, I mean, uh, I'd have to discard a concept. So I'm going to get rid of Bright Idea, I think. I'm going to play Flying Stabby and a Flying Stabby, and I'm going to play Hedgy Hogs, deal damage. And then I'm going to put this underneath Flying Stabby Knives. But I don't need to use Flying Stabby Knives. And her base power, draw a card, put a fragment under a concept. I'm just going to use the one that doesn't have cards underneath it. Because I could still deal damage to Iron Legacy. And he regains the two, because it's... Okay, well, fantastic. At least Akash's environment deck set up. All right, so here, Akash Thria. I'm going to read these cards out if you're not familiar with Akash Thria. Environment Essence. Power. Put a primordial seed from your hand or trash into the environment trash. Draw a card. And we have two primordial seeds in hand. As the Earth turns. Ongoing. Whenever a villain card would be played, Akash Thria may deal herself two psychic damage. If she takes damage this way, play the top card of the environment deck instead. 
At the start of your turn, destroy this card. So we could stop Iron Legacy from playing cards at the expense of an environment play, but sometimes we could um, have the environment play, which could put a Primordial Seed into play. Healing Pollen, Primordial Seed. When this card is played from the environment deck, one hero target regains four HP. When this card is destroyed, draw a card and each hero target regains one HP. So if we can get Iron Legacy to target this one, that's fantastic. Instantaneous Maturation, one shot. Akashriya deals yourself two psychic damage. Search your deck for a Primordial Seed, put it on top of the environment deck, shuffle your deck, play the top card of the environment deck, either play a card or shuffle the environment trash into the environment deck. So this can get us a Primordial Seed that plays from the environment deck, so that if this were like Healing Pollen, it would have the four HP recovery instantly, which is nice. And then there's a variety of Primordial Seeds, at least one of which can destroy an ongoing or environment card when it's destroyed, so that's excellent. And we have Strangling Roots, Primordial Seed. When this card is played from the environment deck, select up to three targets. Reduce damage dealt by those targets by two until the start of your turn. When this card is destroyed, you may destroy one environment card or a target with three or fewer HP. You can put this into play and reduce damage dealt by Iron Legacy by two for a round. But I think the one we want the most is probably Creeping Mold. It will deal damage, and then when Iron Legacy destroys it, we can destroy an ongoing. Uh, there's certainly other options, um, but I think we want the one that could destroy ongoings. And I could actually work on destroying it. Um... Like, I could deal two damage to it immediately. The question is, could we get Parse to do something cool? And I don't think the answer is that exciting. We'd like to get the plus one on Iron Legacy if possible, but... And then Arch and Adept obviously can't do too much, but... Yeah, maybe we want to work on destroying it so we can have Parse destroy it on her turn. And then I'm gonna play a card. I could just keep, yeah, put Healing Pollen out. If I use a power, Iron Legacy heals, so I'm going to avoid using the power for now. Arjun Adept can give a card play as well with his power. Yes, if he uses Adventive Preparation, one player other than me may play one card now. So. I don't know what would be the best means. Best card play here. We can get Verdant Explosion out of turn or something. But I do want to get rid of Creeping Mold like right now. But let's do Targeting Arrow because I don't want the plus one on a seed that's going to get destroyed. But I'm going to do this. to destroy final evolution and now we should be more able to deal with iron legacy all right so let's get the card play this will deal two damage straight up um Unfortunately, I guess we could use Vivid Thoughts. Let's do Vivid Thoughts, because it could do something fun. Reveal the top three cards of your deck. Put any revealed concepts or fragments into play. Uh, we have two fragments. Put the other revealed cards into your hand. So let's do Conceptualize. We can actually get the one that destroys an ongoing when the thing happens. Giant Floaty Head! And then we could try to use that next turn if she survives. Deal a target three, increased by one. Put this underneath something. I guess for giant floaty head. All right. So Iron Legacy is going to do damage to all of us, and hopefully we survive it. Uh, impending casualty. Oh, boy. I'm definitely not going to keep this one in play. And... 
the chances... Uh, oh, we have two strange super egos. Okay, Idealist does not need two strange super egos. Iron Fist Strike. It's Akash Thria. And then we have to destroy two ongoing cards. Alright, let's get rid of Flying Stabby Knives. And... Mm, let's get rid of Syncopated Onslaught, I guess. And then he's going to hit us for a bunch. Healing Pollen actually triggers, though. Yay! HP! It's going to be the Akash 3 show! Hopefully we can work with that. <laughs> Akash 3 versus Iron Legacy. Who wins? We do have one more round with Parse, at least. Okay, so Strange Super Ego. So Strange Super Ego, at the end of your turn, either move a card from under a concept in play to under another concept in play, or destroy one concept in play with no cards under it, then you may draw a card or use a power. So if I want to get rid of Demoralizing Presence, which I do, I'm going to use Giant Floaty Head! Where I draw two cards, or three cards, I don't remember how many cards you draw, I think it's plus one, so it's three cards. And then I can destroy Demoralizing Presence. And then I can move. And then I can use Flying Stabby Knives or play a Fragment. Actually, do we have a better Fragment? This would deal damage. There is a plus one that is more damage. At least on here, target one Psychic, draw a card, or... Yeah. Let's play Sound Beating. I want to utilize the plus one as much as we can. Giant Floaty Head has a card underneath it, so I'm going to put this under Flying Stabby Knives because there's not really going to be too many need, too much need for um, doing other things. All right, so now Akash Thria. Cultivation. At the end of your turn, discard or play the top card of the environment deck. Power, shuffle either one card or all cards from the environment trash into the environment deck. Discard or play the top card of the environment deck. Which is exciting when there's Primordial Seeds, which there currently are not. Burden's Explosion, search for the Primordial Tree put into play, da da da. The Primordial Tree is Akash Flora. This card may regain HP above its max HP. At the start of your turn, each turn may use a power. Whenever power is used this way, this card deals itself two energy damage. At the end of your turn, this card regains two HP and up to two other targets regain one HP each. This is a nice card to try to... <laughs> To utilize powers with, and uh, maybe as HP recovery effect, because it's one to two other targets. The problem is that it's going to die to Iron Legacy, so it's not really too exciting. But I could put it into play for Iron Legacy to soak. I could also utilize Strangling Roots for that. As the Earth turns, we could stop Iron Legacy from playing cards, but that's not really going to help too much. So yeah, Iron Legacy is going to flip and he's going to deal damage to the hero with the lowest HP. So I'm going to put Strangling Roots out just so he can eat that up. And I can still use my base power to move a Primordial Seed from my trash into the environment trash. I might as well do that. And let's put Healing Pollen in there. So that we can maybe keep Akash 3 alive. Alright, so now uh, Parse is done. Or uh, sorry, the Parse's ability is done. Um, doesn't have too much offense here. Buffer Overflow could stop a terrible villain card from entering play, but if Buffer Overflow gets destroyed, then obviously it's not awesome. Um, when this card is destroyed, draw a card and play the top card of the villain deck. Right. Quick calculation. You could search for cards or updated intel. I could try to utilize, I can even try to manipulate Megalopolis with this once we have Primordial Seeds in the trash, or in the deck. Um, yeah, I, I need to work on something here. So I'm going to get set up for like one turn or however long it lasts. Exploit Vulnerability, which would, I guess, help versus uh, plummeting monorails, I guess. Um, let's get the harp out. There's there's nothing else exciting here. And I can search for the Lyra. So once I get the power card, it's great. 
And then a hero other than me may play a card. So if I can keep Akash Flora alive, that might be good. Um... Exploit vulnerability is not going to help. Alternatively, we do, ooh, we do have Karate Robot now. Okay. Yeah. We're going to get Karate Robot out there. Karate Robot! Paparazzi on the scene. Hello. Cannot use powers now. And highest HP is dealt damage. Uh, let's control Iron Legacy. Each player discards a card. No, leave that on the bottom, please. And who is considered to have the most cards in hand? They're discarding four cards. Well, I'm not really excited with Arjun Adept's hand, so I'm going to keep Vernal Sonata. And then Strangling Roots is destroyed, which, oh, actually, that's really good. I can destroy Paparazzi on the scene. Yeah. Okay. Iron Legacy now has a minus one. He flips when he has 25 or more HP, but yeah. Spark of Inspiration is the only play. Might as well play it for the hit point and the card draw. And then I can put this under Karate Robot, which will help bypass the damage reduction. Um, I could use it now. But I think that might not be a good idea. Because I could charge it up more. Because I do have an extra power with Strange Super Ego. Plus I can move a card from underneath another card. I could play a Fragment, which could be Spark of Inspiration. I could draw a card and put a Fragment from my hand under a Concept in Play. Which could power up Karate Robot. Spark of Inspiration would also power up Karate Robot. Flying Stabby Knives would deal one damage, which is essentially half as good, yeah, as Karate Robot. So, what do I want? Hit point? Oh, and I draw a card anyway. Yeah, so I'm going to then play Spark of Inspiration then. Ooh, Monster Vid. Puts itself into play. <laughs> Uh, Monster of Id, what does it do? At the end of your turn, move one card from under another concept and play it under this card. All right. Giant floaty head's going to take one for the team, I guess. But we do have Strange Super Ego to help keep Monster of Id in check. In fact, that will actually work really well. Having Strange Super Ego before Monster of Id helps a lot. We're going to move a card from, it doesn't matter, but Flying Stabby Knives to Karate Robot. And I'm going to use Karate Robot. Because now with the plus one, I'm going to do four and four with Karate Robot. Idealist has turned into a better Iron Legacy. All right. Bearing in mind, though, that we still have to keep a target out for Iron Legacy to eat. Because he's going to do six damage to the lowest HP, or to five damage to the lowest HP hero, who is currently Argent Adept. Uh, so, we could put Akash Flora out there, we could, Noxious Seed would do one toxic damage, Primordial, or Healing Pollen will regain one, so I'm going to do Healing Pollen, and I'll move a Seed, in my trash, there's Strangling Roots and Creeping Mold, move a Seed from my trash, let's move Creeping Mold, yeah. All right. Um, what to do here? Think gauge. Because Parse can only deal one damage to Iron Legacy. So let's see what Iron Legacy has in store. It's Vigilant. <laughs> uh, bottom of deck. No. All right, Vernal Sonata. Hit points. All right, some of us are no longer in the injured state. Awesome. Idealist has board now, 
and Bright Idea. Which could let her draw a card that she's putting from her trash. Because we will definitely have... I mean, I guess we could have someone else who's a, let her play a card. Uh, but... Um... I really want Akash 3 to have the card that says when the Primordial Seed is destroyed, move it to the environment trash, because that cultivation would be really nice. But we don't have that. One with the land is what it's called. Whenever a primordial seed is destroyed, you may move it to the environment trash. Whenever a hero target would be dealt damage by an environment card, you may redirect that damage to a primordial seed. Uh, so I'm going to have Idealist draw a card, which... Um... I think it's going to be sound beating. I mean, Vivid Thoughts could be exciting, because it could reveal a variety of concepts and fragments, but Sound Beating is a guaranteed 3 damage. I'm going to do Sound Beating. Plus, we'll also power up Karate Robot, which is the important thing. Instantaneous Maturation. Let's do that one. Targeting Arrow, of course. And then Argent Adept. Um, honestly, I don't want any of these. I'm going to skip Put the bottom of my deck into play, which... Exciting! I can actually trigger Inventive Preparation twice! Yeah! Okay, well. Um, Alright, so let's stick with the original thought. Draw a card, which is... Thing. Sound beating. And then that's the only concept that was in my trash. And that card, oh, yeah, the top card of my deck is under that concept. I can put this card underneath Karate Robot. And now I can have a player to play a card! Now I could give it to Idealist, but she doesn't have another card play for her play phase. Um... I could put Cultivation out for Akash 3 uh. I could put Verdant Explosion out because you could try to keep the Primordial Tree alive. Although keeping it alive doesn't really amount to too much. Yeah, let's... Oh, that was the wrong choice. Oh no, I lost my mints! It was this. It was Probably for a player. Okay. Put this under Karate Robot. And then we do Akash. Verdant Explosion. And I want to keep healing pollen out. Increase all damage by one. Interesting. Uh oh. Uh oh. That's a bad one. Iron Legacy deals to each non villain target three melee damage. Well, uh oh. Because there's a plus one and a plus one and a plus one. And that's going to take out the, the <laughs> Akash Flora. Uh, well, then. And we also either have to discard two cards or destroy one of our cards. That's really not good. Um, we already know the bottom card of Iron Legacy's deck. Megalopolis isn't going to be playing cards for a while. But yeah, let's look at the bottom. Targeting Innocent's bottom. So... <laughs> Let's hit the healing pollen first, because each hero target will regain one. Crashing brambles. And 
And then I don't think the rest of this matters. So much for Akash Flora. Also, so much for Arjun Adept. Each player must either discard two cards or destroy one of their cards. Oh man, I wanted... Okay, I guess Idealist does have options here. Destroy one card. Okay, yeah, you have... You could destroy a card that's underneath Monster of Id. Yes! Um, I kind of don't really want to do that, though. But I have two Flying Stabbing Eyes. Yeah, so I can get rid of the one that has nothing. And then Akash 3 uh, does not have a card to destroy, so she's going to discard two... Uh, uh, she needs to keep a seed. Parks, you have updated Intel Engage, neither of which have been useful. Well, let's get rid of updated Intel because you could still use Gage. Art is Depth has to destroy a card. There goes the harp. Not that it matters because Argent Adept is gone. All right, sound beating. Rooftop combat will probably just get destroyed immediately. But, all right, and again, I don't want to actually use a thing. Um, I could use flying stabby knives. Face the pump. I could draw a card, but I don't have a fragment in hand now. Board now. I could have actually used board now. Actually, let me let me rewind. Sound beating would do three damage. I could use board now. Return all cards under a concept to my hand. Shuffle that concept in my deck. I could put one card in my hand. That would deal two damage. Okay, that's not too exciting. Yeah, I think it's going to be sound beating. I could utilize flying stabby knives, but I'm going to move one card away from Karate Robot to do that. Because Monster Vid's going to steal it. Whereas, I mean, Strange Super Ego will actually move the monster of id card underneath karate robot or no but then then i may draw a card to use a power and then i could use karate robot <laughs> but then the problem is monster of id is like well you know you don't have any other card so i'm gonna have idealist deal herself x psychic damage where x is the number of cards under this card plus one so it's one plus one plus one is three yeah. I could go, like, balls to the wall here. Because uh, this will be 2 plus 1 plus 1 minus 1 is 3. I've dealt 4 damage this turn. So, actually, I'm going to destroy that card, like, soon. Move the card from Monster of Id. Karate Robot deals 3 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 6. Minus 1 is 5. Then Rooftop Combat is destroyed. The next one does 4. 5 plus 4 is 9. And then this is going to be 3 is 12, so it'll be down to 3. So if I could deal 3 damage on the other turn somehow, which Prime Warden's Arch and Adept, one player may draw a card, destroy an environment card, or redirect the next damage that will be dealt to a hero target to another target. Oh! 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 Okay. Let's redirect Iron Legacy's damage to Iron Legacy. Also, that was the card I was going to draw, and it was not a fragment. Move a card from another concept. Monster of Id to Karate Robot. And then we shall use a power. Karate Robot. And then damage. And then damage. And then damage. Okay. Can we deal three damage here? <laughs> um.
Well, Parse is the only other hero that has damage dealing right now, I guess. And <laughs> she has none. <laughs> uh, so we could have Akash 3 deal herself it up to X targets, two melee damage and two toxic damage each. Where X is the number of primordial seeds in play plus what? Well, she'll survive this. <laughs> uh, and then she could deal two damage to Iron Legacy. Oh, boy. This is like completely suicidal, but it's working. Yeah. So I guess whatever. And then base power for the win. All right, there we go. That's how you defeat Iron Legacy. <laughs> oh boy, that wasn't close at all. Not even close. Well, Iron Legacy and Megalopolis was bested. <laughs> defeat him with a full setup team. Yes, of course. Oh boy, and that was a rough start, but we managed to overcome the odds and get past them. So I'm going to look over here because that's where you guys are, in fact. Also going to move the chat over here so that if there's messages, I can see them more easily. 100 bits from Dover saying, Parse coming in clutch, indeed. So, yes. Um, also, it's not appearing on stream because weird things. There! Next. I don't know why it did. Is it because I moved it to that window? No, it's not. It's just I didn't set it up correctly. Okay. Well, all right. Well, that does wrap it up for Dolphin's Dive this week. And I have to announce that this will be my last stream of Dolphin's Dive as a 29-year-old. Next week, I'll be 30. So you can look forward to a stream from a 30-year-old next week. Yeah! But in any case, I hope you enjoyed watching this stream. I will be around next week for more Dolphin's Dive content. John teased us with an update to the Steam page saying that the release is soon trademark for Oblivion, which means that you might be able to look forward to that being in your digital digital hands soon trademark. And if you if you understand the history of soon trademark, you might actually understand what that means. So let's figure out. Um, congrats on the dirty thirties. Um, yeah, let's wait and see when the game gets released. Then you too can play Oblivion with these heroes. But uh, yeah, that does wrap up the stream this week. Um, be sure to check out the other channels or other streams on this channel. We have On Deck every Monday with Pirate Savvy and Dover, two awesome brother sister people who have a very engaging and a an excellent chat and stream as well for that matter. Uh, we have. Candelabra Live every Tuesday with John and occasionally Jeremy, where they are the developers, two of the developers, well, one developer and the head honcho of Candelabra, and they will show content before it is available, uh, whereas I do sh I have been showing it this week and the last week, but they show like everything while they're developing, which is awesome. And there's Dolphins Live every Friday, of course, right here, where we do strategy streams. Every Sunday is Tales from the Archive with another lit down where they do storytelling sentinels. All of these streams occur at 7 p.m. Eastern time. Bear in mind that this week, Daylight Savings Time started in the US. It is early compared to almost every other country. So that does mean that there'll be an hour difference to the international people who haven't started Daylight Savings yet, or for the US residents or elsewhere who don't observe Daylight Savings period, which is how it should be. Daylight Savings sucks and it should be abolished. But whatever, that's like the least of the U.S. problems right now anyway. So whatever. Uh, but yeah, so pay attention to that and be careful of the date and time. Um, Settles the Multiverse and One Deck Dungeon and Bottom of the Ninth are all available digitally on Steam, iOS, Android devices. And you can find out more information on these games if you don't currently own them through Handelabra.com. You can also get the games physically, and physical games are fun. Certainly, it's a bit more engaging to have to manually track things yourself. I know when I play this game physically, I tend to forget various things uh, because I'm so used to the digital game tracking it for me. But do bear in mind that most of this was available physically before it was 
digital. In fact, all of it was available physical before it was digital, period. But <laughs> when the, the digital game actually first came out, I think that was like right before Wrath of the Cosmos came out. So most of the physical game was developed before the digital game even started. So people played this game for years without there being a digital uh, version to play. And so tracking was a must. Some people might forget that or might not have known that was a thing because of the, of the ease of the digital game. But hey, physical games are fun in their own right. Plus it really amps up the cooperation aspect when you're all tracking your hero and the environment and the villain or whatever. And you're, you know, checking that everyone's doing their thing. Anyway, long-winded rant aside, this game is fun to play, and if you have not gotten it yet, you should get it. It is great fun. But that does wrap it up for this week. I hope you enjoyed this stream as always, and be sure to like, share, subscribe, and follow, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Typical YouTube mantra. If you like what you're watching, be sure to like, share, subscribe, and follow, and tweet all of our tweets out to your fans. Uh, as usual. But anyway, uh, have a good night, all. Peace out. Peace out indeed. Alright. Good night.